And the first thing is the command of forgiveness. We read there in verse 21 and 22 of Matthew 18 that Peter said, Lord, how often should I forgive someone who sins against me? Seven times? And Jesus says, no, not seven times, but 70 times. Seven. You can't help thinking, or I can't help thinking, that Peter asked this question because he was trying to get out of forgiving somebody. Mm -hmm. I just get that impression somehow. He didn't want to forgive somebody because they probably sinned against him, done something wrong so many times. He says to Jesus, how long does this have to go on, Jesus? Just seven times? When is it okay not to forgive somebody? Was what Peter was really asking. Perhaps we ask that question. Either people keep doing wrong things against us and we think, I can't keep on forgiving this person. Or maybe somebody has done something against us that we consider to be unforgivable. And we just can't bring ourselves to forgive them for it. But you know what Jesus is saying here? He's saying this, that our forgiveness should be unconditional and unlimited. There should be no limit, no conditions attached to our forgiveness. Now of course, unconditional forgiveness is extremely difficult. It's a hard, hard command to obey. And there are times in our lives when we're so hurt that we almost find it impossible. Impossible to say, and to me, I forgive you. But it's not impossible. You know, a number of years ago, not too many years ago, but after apartheid was destroyed in South Africa, they set up a, a commission called the Truth and Reconciliation Commission. And that commission was there to deal with the hurt and try and bring reconciliation between the blacks and the whites. And it was based on the whole concept of truth. Archbishop Desmond Tutu was one of the leading people involved in that. And the Archbishop would sit two opposing parties in a room. On one side would be the white policemen. On the other side would be the black mothers and wives of people whom the white policemen had tortured, raped, murdered. And they would sit there and they would listen to the horrific stories that had happened drawing that awful, awful chapter in South African history. Of course, it happened the other way around as well, with the blacks and the whites. Some found it impossible to forgive. I was finding it very, very difficult. Some found it impossible. But you know, even in that story in South Africa, there were amazing accounts of beautiful forgiveness and beautiful reconciliation. There were stories of mothers embracing those who had murdered their children in forgiveness. It's hard, but it's possible. Of course, it's easy for me to stand up here and preach such things. It's very difficult to put them into practice. And don't you just love those Christians who think everything is so easy? You know, when I was growing up, when I was a teenager, and Nicola came to visit me this weekend in Stoke, and our house got broken into. Our house got broken into. And they stole my mum's jewellery and all of the Dalton figures and so on. And of course, the following morning, Sunday morning, they prayed for, for the family in church, which was a nice thing to do. And one of the well-meaning Christian ladies came to my mum and said, you've got to forgive them, you know, we lame. Forgive them, I'd like to knock the blocks off. That's what my mum said back. Hey. I think I would have liked to knock the blocks off as well. You see, it's not always easy. It's not always easy, it's hard. And yet in time, we have to come to a place of unconditional forgiveness. And not just unconditional forgiveness, but also unlimited forgiveness. How often should we forgive? 70 times 7? That's 490. I have to do that on the computer, by the way. <laughs> 490 times. I would find it difficult to count up to 490 times if somebody had done something against me. Of course, there are people who can do that. You know, they have a little black book with all the dates in their head, okay? 
and they can tell you if it was a 489th time or the 490th time that you've done something wrong against them. What's Jesus saying? Jesus is saying, forget about the numbers, Peter. Just keep on. Keep on forgiving and forgiving. Of course, I have to say this here, that forgiveness is basically not holding anything against anybody. It's basically not seeking revenge or trying to get our own back. And it's important to remind ourselves here to balance this up, that we don't let people walk all over us. Okay, We understand that, and that isn't what Jesus is saying. Sometimes we have to make a stand against people who continually insult and hurt us, and sometimes it is right to do that. But it's possible, you know, to take steps to stop ourselves being hurt again whilst at the same time expressing forgiveness. It's possible to find a balance there and to see both sides happening. Yet we must be, never be in a situation where we seek revenge. No. Vengeance is mine, says the Lord, I will repay. We're commanded to forgive. <coughs> Unconditional, unlimited. It's hard, but it's still a command of Jesus and one that we must seek to fulfill. I wonder, is there anybody that we haven't forgiven this morning? Is there anybody? Let's seek to obey the command.